Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't heard me mention it on my channel before, it took me six and a half years to get my PhD. And today I just want to try to articulate why I think it took me that long to get it and just sort of talk about all of the factors that I feel like contributed to the length of time that I spent in graduate school. First off, I went straight from undergrad into my PhD program. I have seen sometimes, I guess, depending of course on your advisor and your project, that if you come in with a master's already, it could take you less time to graduate, maybe four years, but that's just based off of, you know, people that I know and what I've observed other people doing. But I went into graduate school with only a bachelor's and with very little undergraduate research experience. I mean, I did one summer of undergraduate research, but I would hardly call that beneficial. I also went into graduate school without really knowing what I wanted my focus to be. And I think my advisor knew that. And so he knew that I wanted to explore different options and different projects. And so I think that's why I spent the first like half of my PhD career without real focus. So that's the first reason it took me six and a half years to get my PhD. I'd call it lack of focus in terms of a project. For probably over half of my years in grad school, I didn't have a very clearly defined project that I could use for my dissertation. And I mean, it is research, so it's not really something to complain about or to use as an excuse or anything. But some students are given a very clearly defined project by their advisor. And so for those people, I think their roadmap to graduation is more well-defined. I was given a very open-ended problem when I got to graduate school. And on top of that, my advisor had me work with one of my lab mates on a different project that was completely unrelated to anything that I was going to be using for my dissertation, which is fine. It just means that I spent three to four years of my degree not fully focused on work that I needed to accomplish to actually graduate. I do think it's common where you might have two grad students working together on their research, but in those situations, I think it's best probably if there are very well-defined contributions or expected contributions from each person and that each person also defines their own completely separate yet, of course, related thesis topics. That way, all of the work that each student is doing can be part of their dissertation. But I didn't do that with my lab mate and that's okay. I mean, I didn't have any resentment toward my lab mate, no bitterness about the situation at all. I don't really have regrets in thinking that I should have worked harder to narrow in on a research topic earlier or that I shouldn't have jumped around so much between projects because I think that working on a variety of topics helped me in that it gave me the background to be able to interview for a variety of jobs and to really think about what I wanted to do after I graduated. If I was completely focused on a single topic for my entire PhD career, I think it could have limited me in exploring different roles in industry. Another reason why I think it took me as long as it did to graduate was my advisor. And I don't think I would have had it any other way, but anyone who's gone for a PhD or who is going for a PhD can tell you that however long it takes you to graduate is heavily dependent on your advisor. My advisor was very hands-off and his philosophy was very much about letting the students drive their own research. And while I think that was really good for me in that it helped me develop my own work ethic and work habits, and I learned to be self-motivated, and all these traits are really good to have when you work any job, I know that I do very well when I'm given very well-defined tasks and deadlines. With my advisor, I had to more or less define my own tasks and give myself my own deadlines. And I would only reach out to him if I needed guidance or if I was feeling stuck or lost. I think the reason I sometimes like being given tasks is that when someone else is telling me what to do, I assume that it's possible to do. Like I trust them that they're giving me something that I can actually accomplish and deliver on. But when I'm giving myself my own tasks and setting my own deadlines, I almost don't really trust my own planning. And so, I go in almost thinking like my plans are not set in stone and then 
I end up being more lenient with myself if things don't go according to plan or if deadlines have to slip. But if somebody else is giving me tasks and doing the planning for me, then in my mind, those tasks and those deadlines are set in stone. And I think I work harder to try to meet those deadlines. I think I'm a little bit better now at setting deadlines and well-defined and realistic goals for myself, but I don't think I was like that in graduate school. Another thing that I did in graduate school that took up quite a bit of time was interning. Almost every summer I would go off for an internship, and if you do stay over the summers at school and you continue with your research, I think that's one way you could accelerate your path to graduation. But I didn't know what I wanted to do after I graduated, so I wanted to explore as many options as I could. I didn't think that I wanted to stay in academia, meaning I didn't think I wanted to like find a postdoc or a faculty position at some research institution or another university or something and continue doing research. I didn't think that I wanted to do that, but I wasn't sure. And I also wasn't sure if I went into industry, like what line of work I would actually be interested in doing. And most people probably know this, but when I say go into industry, I mean find a full-time job at most likely a tech company. So when I was in graduate school, I thought, and I still think this way, that internships are extremely valuable. They are very helpful in helping you figure out what kind of work you actually want to do, what kind of company you want to work for, what kind of team you want to be a part of, even like what kind of manager or management styles work best for you. Because internships are time boxed roles. You're only there for a few months and you're treated like a full-time employee. Well, ideally. So for those three months, you can experience what it's like to actually live in a particular city and to interact with certain people and do certain tasks on a daily basis. That experience is so invaluable and you can also witness and live firsthand that company's culture and see if it's a good fit for you. I don't think you can get this kind of trial period unless you do an internship. My advisor also encouraged me to find internships. If a student was really close to graduating or if their project required it, he would tell people to stay over the summer and continue with their research. But for the most part, he encouraged his students to go out and find internships. And even though I tried to continue doing my own research while I interned, except for at Google because they didn't allow it, the pace at which you progress is way slower when you are not fully focused on your research. So while I did try to do some research during the summers that I was interning, I feel like I was effectively shelving my research whenever I'd go off to do an internship. And you know, I don't regret any of it. If I was doing my PhD again, I would still do an internship any summer that I could get one. I think they were really helpful in just getting me to think about other problems because when you are a PhD student and you're focused on your research, you become so focused and so consumed by one problem that your perspective, I think, very naturally narrows. So I think it's good for any engineer or innovator or researcher to just go out and explore other problems once in a while. And I may never have actually been able to define my thesis problem had I not interned at Texas Instruments one summer. So you never know what you could get out of an internship. I feel like you have everything to gain and very little to lose besides a bit of time. So those are the three main reasons why it took me six and a half years to get my PhD. At my school too, they told us they would stop funding us after seven years. So towards the end, I was feeling a little bit of pressure to graduate, but everybody's path is different. Everyone's grad school experience is different. I know people who have graduated much quicker and some people who take eight plus years to graduate. There are just so many factors that go into how long it takes you to get your degree. I guess if you're watching this and you are currently in graduate school or you're thinking about going to graduate school, I hope this gives you some perspective on what a PhD experience could be like. And I don't think anybody has a perfect PhD career. At least I've never heard of one. So just know that everybody has a different experience and there will undoubtedly be times that test your confidence and your patience and your will. I could probably do an entire video talking about all of the obstacles I faced 
in graduate school. But there's not one correct way to get your PhD, and there's not like a number of years that's like the ideal amount of time to spend in graduate school. So, okay, I think I'm going to end the video here. I hope that learning about my experience was helpful to you. Feel free to leave any questions you have for me in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Oh boy.